In this video, we take a look at the entry-level mid-2017 5K iMac. In my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck as far as Mac computers go. So in this video, I'm going to explain my reasoning behind that thought and share with you several areas that make this computer one of the best values on the market today. So let's get started. Of course, the most noticeable thing about the 5K iMac is its namesake, the 5K display. It is incredible. It's even better this time around. It's brighter at 500 nits of brightness, which is 43% brighter than the previous model. And it also has better color reproduction. But the big thing here is that you get a true 5K display, 5120 by 2880 native resolution. You can switch to that. And of course, LG produced a 5K display as well. This is the LG Ultrafine 5K display. It costs about 1300 bucks. And not only did this display have a few problems out of the gate, but it also isn't gonna win any design awards. When compared to the iMac, there simply is no comparison. The iMac is so much better looking and it's only about 500 bucks more, or even less than that if you catch it on sale. And considering there's a full computer inside the iMac, I'd say it's a pretty good value. For the very first time with the mid-2017 refresh, the iMac now has Thunderbolt 3 support in tow. You get two Thunderbolt 3 ports right next to the rest of the I.O. on the rear of the machine. And while this may not seem like a huge deal on the surface, it really is a big deal because the iMac is an all-in-one machine. It's not traditionally upgradable, uh, but Thunderbolt 3 really does allow you to expand the iMac's capabilities using external peripherals. So all you need to do is connect a single Thunderbolt 3 cable like this, for instance, and connect to an external storage device like this. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. You can connect to some really, really fast external storage, external GPUs, etc. Now, one of the reasons why I value the entry-level 5K iMac so much is because the RAM is upgradable out of the box. So that means you don't have to go and splurge on Apple's ridiculously overpriced RAM modules. You can simply go out and buy your own like I've done here. So by going with third-party RAM modules aftermarket, I was able to save a significant amount of money. In fact, I went from 8 gigabytes of RAM to 40 gigabytes of RAM, and it was way cheaper to go this route. And one of the great things about macOS High Sierra, the upcoming version of macOS, is that there will be built-in support for external GPUs, which is perfect for Thunderbolt 3 connectivity found on the 5K iMac. Now, in this example, I'm connecting to my MacBook Pro, which also has Thunderbolt 3, and you can see it's connected to an external display, and it's being driven by the AMD RX 580 in the external GPU box there. Now, in the future, hopefully, we'll be able to drive the internal display of the 5K iMac with an external GPU. That would be really the ultimate setup, but it's super promising as is. And then lastly, the mid-2017 entry-level 5K iMac includes a KB Lake quad-core processor. This is the i5 version, and this features a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz, and it turbos up to 3.8 gigahertz. So when you need that extra boost of speed, it can be a little bit faster. Now it only makes sense considering this is the entry level 5K iMac that it would be the slowest of the available models. The 5K iMac is actually available with four different quad core processors. You have the entry level 3.4 gigahertz model, the 3.5 gigahertz model, and a 3.8 gigahertz model. And you can see the turbo boost speeds increase as well. However, there is one other processor and that is the i7 model. It is Intel 7700K, also a 7th generation KB Lake processor. And this i7 model starts with a base clock of 4.2 GHz, turbos up to 4.5 GHz, and it also includes hyper-threading. So like all of the quad-core chips, there are four cores, right? But with hyper-threading, you get two threads per core for a total of eight threads, and that increases the efficiency of those cores. So there's no mistaking that the i7 model is the best model out there. However, the i5 model is no slouch, and I find that it handles 4K video editing or whatever else I throw at it surprisingly well. That's not to say that the iMac is perfect. The biggest gripe that I have is with the design. The design is looking a little, a little dated right now. You have that large chin at the bottom. You have those huge bezels, and I, I mean, just absolutely huge bezels that just look dated in 2017. Apple really needs to ditch those bezels, get rid of the chin, and give us an iMac that's all display. That said, the entry-level 5K iMac is an awesome bang for the buck. You also get the Magic Keyboard, $99 value, the Magic Mouse 2, $79 value, and a lightning cable to charge the devices, $19 value, 
There's a lot of value built into this 5K iMac entry level package. And then you have the ability to upgrade the RAM, add fast external storage, add an external GPU, and you can see why the 5K iMac is a virtual still at its entry level asking price. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.